Hi! In this video, we're here to begin mixing our first song inside of Mixcraft. This is a big step and a very exciting day for your first project in Mixcraft. In this video, we're going to create our first basic mix inside of Mixcraft, and then from there, we'll be adding effects and mastering effects, and then you will be ready to publish and share your first song with the world. As a whole, mixing is a pretty complicated process, but in this video, we're going to break it down to its basic principles using only two controls to mix our song, volume and panning. Mixing at its core level, I like to think, is a lot like cooking. You don't want too much of any one thing or it kind of spoils the final product. On the smaller scale, you can think of this simply as volume. You don't want any one thing to be too loud and overtake everything. You just want things to gel together nicely. In the grander scheme of things, this refers to maintaining a good practice of not overdoing any one thing, whether that's an effect or volume or whatever it may be, unless you're going for a specific creative result. So, in order to keep things simple today, we'll start off our very first mix by using only the volume and pan controls found in the main window. Before we begin the mix today, I'm going to do a few things by adjusting the volume of a few tracks. I already had to turn a few down as they were quite loud. So, when you begin mixing, you should have all of your tracks here at zero. You don't want them to be plus anything or minus anything. You want them to be right at zero. Now that we've got everything at zero, we can take a listen to our project to get an idea of what we're going to be working with today. That said, consider this your volume warning. Everything right now is at zero. It's going to be quite loud, there's going to be a bit of clipping, and it's not going to sound that great. So this is your volume warning. I'm going to begin playing it in three, two, one. So that's what we have to start with. It's not bad, but it's certainly not ready to go. As I'm sure you can tell, the shaker is quite loud, things aren't really even, it doesn't really sound very wide, there's a few problems we need to address. As a good practice, I find it's always good to begin your mix by only using volume and panning. You don't want to add any effects or anything right off the bat. You want to keep things simple and try and level things out. That being said, what we can do is go over here to the left where all of our tracks are, and I'm going to drag every single fader all the way down to minus infinity so that everything is completely muted and we have a fresh, clean slate to start with. Before we begin, there's a couple tips and practices I have that you might find handy. First off, I would like to suggest you mix using the loudest segment of your song at first. This way, you can get an idea of how everything is going to sound together. In this case, we'll be using the main region of the song here where everything is going at once. Another good idea is to loop this section so you can leave it playing as you work. To do this, we'll go up to the top and click and drag and highlight that entire region. Then we can hit L to loop this. So now this will cycle indefinitely until we're happy with our mix and then we can take a listen to the full track and make further adjustments as needed. In general, when I'm mixing, I like to work in order of importance of each element. I like to first start with my foundational elements and then bring things in in order of how important they are to the song. Generally speaking, this first means mixing the drums and bass as those are kind of the core elements of the track. Then I'll bring in my primary elements, my secondary elements, and then other little accent things. And by that time, everything should be relatively balanced as I'm bringing them in in order of priority. With that out of the way, let's begin by mixing our first song by bringing in our drums. What we want to achieve here is a good foundational level to start things off with. Like I said earlier, mixing is just as much an art as it is a science, so there's no hard and fast rule, but typically speaking, I like to get my drums to where the meter ends up sitting about three quarters of the way up. So let's begin playing our project and bringing in our drums by dragging the fader back up. I think that's a good spot to be at. We see the meter's about three quarters of the way up, it's not too loud, we're not having any clipping, and we've got plenty of room left over in case we need to turn things up or adjust things later on. Now let's go back and start bringing in our bass. I think that's a pretty good level and it sits pretty well together. However, I've been doing this for a long time, so I have a pretty good ear at this point. If you're ever not sure what level to set something at, bring it up until it's way too much and start backing it off. Mm -hmm. 
Another good way to find a good value to set is to see what value you're at currently. In this case, I'm at minus 9.4 dB. A good rule to figure out what value you should set it at is bring it down until it's too quiet and write that down, and then bring it up until it's slightly too loud and write that down. That means your ideal value is somewhere in the middle. Now we've got our drums and bass together, and things sound pretty solid. I think the first most important element is going to be the electric guitars. Let's bring in the first guitar now. That sounds good. Let's bring in the second guitar now. So at this point the mix sounds pretty good, but the guitars maybe run together a bit too much. I can't really tell that there's two individual guitars going, and the mix as a whole doesn't sound very wide or big. To address that, we can use what's called panning. That is the slider over here to the left of our main volume slider. What panning allows us to do is change an element's position in the stereo spectrum, or simply put, moving it from one ear to the other. In this case what we can do is grab our first electric guitar, and we'll move it about 80% or 90% to the left. Then we'll do the same thing with the second electric guitar, but instead move it about 80 or 90% to the right. Now we should have a really nice, big, wide guitar sound. Let's go back and take another listen. That already sounds a lot better. My next important element is probably the acoustic guitars. Let's begin bringing those in. We have a similar issue with the acoustics, so let's pan these out as well, but not be as aggressive. We'll go for about 50% to the left and 50% to the right. Then let's adjust our volume accordingly. At this point, we're at a pretty good spot. We brought in our foundation and we brought in our main elements. Now, let's bring in the secondary elements like the organ and then bring in our final element being the shaker. Excellent, I think that sounds really good and we've got a very balanced mix now. Let's turn off the loop by hitting L on the keyboard or you can disable it with the loop icon down here and take a listen to more of the full song in context. Awesome, I think that sounds good and I'm pretty happy with that. However, I think the drums could come up just a bit more. So we'll go back and increase the level slightly. That sounds a lot better. Now we've got a bit more thump and weight to the drums and they stand out a bit more clearly. At this point, I think there's only one last thing I'd like to do and that's add a fade out here on the end of the song. To do that, we can go to our master track down here in the bottom and use this white line to create a fade out. Let's go to the top and click bar 27 and then zoom in. 
What this white line represents here is the volume of the master track. In this case, we want it to go from zero where it should be all the way down to minus infinity so it fades out over the course of one bar. To do this, we can click using this plus tool and make sure the value is at zero dB. We don't want to go up or down at this point. What we want to do is keep it right where it is. As a general guide, you should never increase the master fader over zero dB. Now that we've added our first point, we need to add a second point to change the volume over time. We'll go to bar 28 and add a new point and drag this down to minus infinity. Let's go back and take a listen to the fade out. Excellent, as you can hear, it fades out to minus infinity over the course of one bar. To explain this in a bit more detail, what we've done is control the volume over time. This is a concept known as automation. Automation is an incredibly deep and incredibly powerful tool that you can use in your mixes to control things like volume over time or even individual parameters of an effect. That is to say, it's a pretty deep rabbit hole and it is really, really cool. There are many kinds of automation and we'll touch on more advanced automation concepts later on. So for now, we'll leave it at that, and we've created our master track fadeout. By this point, you should be comfortable with creating an initial balanced mix, as well as adding in a fade in or fade out to your master track. Next up, we're ready to begin adding some effects to create a more polished final product, do a second round of mixing using some more advanced concepts, and finally, master our track so it's ready to share. So that does it for this video. Thanks for watching.